Let's get the hard thing out of the way. This is my name. <laughs> so, a uh, little bit about me. You know, I couldn't spell it until I was nine years old. Or actually, <laughs> no, 14. Uh, and therefore, I decided to just uh, simplify it to GK. So you can actually feel free to, to uh, always address me as GK because that's how I like it. And the reason why I couldn't spell it was because I was actually, uh, I'm dyslexic. So, uh, and when I was a kid, uh, it was quite hard. And I, I got myself into programming when I was about nine, <coughs> 10. And what I developed was actually Willy Wittelate, which is one of the, the first um, kind of reinforcement learning app uh, that was out there to actually educate children on spelling, just trying to solve it. And uh, then I went to computer science, went to sleep for a few years. I was actually a data scientist in a sleep uh, lab uh, and really got to know data science. Then uh, after that, I went after the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> so I spent about six, seven years in speech analytics, uh, text analytics, trade analytics, trying to find these guys. And that was after the Wolf of Wall Street before the movie came out. And it was really good promotion when the movie came out because then I understood their behavior a lot more. And that word behavior has overstuck uh, with me. And when I was uh, working for Citigroup, they asked me to come over there to, to run a few of the tech uh, pro projects. Uh, in that journey, I started to know these kind of people. Uh, and uh, started to think about how actually how bad the world is out there that this actually exists. And knowing the fact that we had thousands of thousands of people trying to find these people, and they weren't able to find them. So, and what I realized was that these people were spending six hours a day understanding the data that was presenting to them. Six hours a day, and two productive hours. And uh, of course, there, there are more teams and then more teams. So there's a flow of uh, anti monitoring through, throughout, and there's a lot of people there. And so isn't the solution just AI? So we started to uh, develop algorithms, lowered false positives, but then this actually happens. So you lower, lower the false positive, find a lot more. So the investment that you need to do to actually do proper AI is enormous in people. So you, actually the ROI is zero. So what can you do? Uh, I started to think that, and I'm an MBA, and I put up a matrix that there was rule-based systems there that was really easy, but not very effective. Then uh, there were AI systems that were really, really hard, but uh, uh, very smart. And well, you know, what can you do? So I was reading an article with my healthcare background uh, from MIT about uh, doctors and doctors using AI. And it turns out that breast cancer doctors have three and a half percent error rate uh, when detecting breast cancer, which is a horrifying figure. With AI, and this is back in uh, about uh, 10 years ago, that error rate could go to 2.9%. But when the AI result was presented to the doctor, it went down to 0.5%. Think about that. If we could get AI and humans to work together in harmony. And what was remarkable was that they did the decisions 2x faster. Now that's interesting. So I started to think, I want to build a company, and I want to be there. Easy and smart. That's quite, quite a challenge. So, and as I wanted to build a company that was really a navigation system for all of these people in the process. So when, they, when you look at uh, the data that is being presented to you in an AML matter, or a fraud matter, or a, uh, or a, comp uh, a compliance in, in general, I wanted them to understand where to drive to. And we have a lot of smart navigation systems. And I really, really wanted to build a co-pilot for all of these people. 
So, and where we started was with a case management system. So you can probably see the UI a little bit better there. And uh, we started with then actor intelligence, really understanding the client, really going to the depth of what, how the client is behaving. And then we uh, went after uh, a fa even faster user experience because every second matter when you have 10 to 5,000 people. And then we did a lot of third party integrations, Xeon, Naterium, and others that we can now be accessed through this great interface. And today, I want to really think about what is left because we have now optimized the front end. We really made it fast. We have done a lot of smart things, but I want to do a little bit more. Introducing Copilot for compliance. So uh, what you're seeing here is actually a companion for all of these people. You're seeing a, a, a system that actually helps people navigate their way through their day. So what does it do? It's actually the reason what we have been, uh, or what we have been building for the last four years. We have been building a system that can understand behavior of your customers. We have been, been building a system that really can explain the behavior to, uh, to, uh, to your analysts. And now we're introducing a third component, a body to your compliance uh, analysts that can actually go through and start to coach your people, start to give them insights into what really matters starts to search automatically the internet and, and so on for your, your people, and maybe even write the, the very difficult disposition narratives, write the SAR narratives. Wouldn't it be magical to have a body like that? So uh, today, and I, uh, everyone here, I want you to pay attention to the other screen. So this is a quick demo that I will walk you through of the Copilot. So now the user is saying hello to Lucy. It actually says hello back to you and starts to communicate. Then you go up and say, hey, can you give me a little bit of an insight into, uh, into the, the case? It explains what is happening in the case in words, not just in, in pictures like we have been doing. It, it then goes, you can start to review it get to introduce to the client. It tells you a story about what is happening. You go in and say, hmm, what is rapid movement of funds? Give me a little bit of an insight into that. It generates an insight into what rapid movement of funds is, takes that from our knowledge graph, creates a, uh, a how to review guide for the, for, the, uh, for the analyst, if the analyst is junior. And then gives you a reference to internal procedures, if actually they exist, or to external like FATF. Then you say, uh, run a background check on anything that is there. It goes out to the internet, searches internet sites, it searches background checks, uh, like sanction and Ethereum, exp uh, it searches experience database, and it comes back and summarizes it in a beautiful wording uh, for, for your analyst. And then you simply just Click Add to Note after you read it, and then it's documented in that case. Taking the pain away from the entire day of, uh, of review. Then it goes, please turn this into a Slack message for my boss. <laughs> it does that. Then you go, oh, I'm going to edit it a little bit. So you're always in control. You edit it. Oh, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Click send Slack, and it actually sends it to the group that it's assigned to. And you go there, hmm, I'm actually pretty happy right now, or not, because you found money laundering. And you go, write my disposition narrative for me. That happens. Takes about 30 seconds. There you have a beautifully written, spelled correctly uh, disposition narrative. 
that is templified so that you are in control of this AI. And you go, actually, this is pretty good. Click, add to SAR narrative, and then you escalate to the next case. So to put this into perspective, what we just watched here was probably going from around two, three hours of review down to about 20 minutes. And we're just starting to scratch the surface of what we want to achieve. Does this make sense? Yep. So, remember the statement in the beginning, my vision for the company was to go from six hours to really minutes. And we took a big, huge leap today for that. But furthermore, for my ego, I think you agree with me that I am now, we are at the top. So this is, has been in the making for four years uh, in the Lucindy Lab. We have another project also on the way that we will introduce in uh, June from the Lucinity Lab. So the Lucinity Lab is where we actually develop the most sci-fi things uh, in the company. Uh, we have been doing this Lucinity Lab with our great partner, Microsoft. So this is based on the open AI technology that has just uh, come out. Even though we have been working on it for, uh, for four years, the open AI technology accelerated our, our mission to, to accomplish this. The one thing that I want to note is that this is all secure. This is happening within the cloud parameters. It's happening actually on the Lucinity cloud. Nothing is unsecure here. And we can have a uh, conversation with our uh, partners in Microsoft uh, about that, as well as our security expert of how we achieved that. We are starting customer trials in Q3 for this. And uh, we hope you all sign up. There has been started a, a little bit of a queue. So we will not let everyone in at, at once. Because one of the things that is important to me is that we have a complete ethical stance to this AI. I don't, can't think of a better reason to use AI to actually be ethical uh, and to fight financial crimes like this. So here is to the future. Oh, sorry, that's my <laughs> dyslexia. That's, let's make the co-pilot work a little bit. Here's to the future. Scout. <laughs>